when I was director here at WIDA, the, um, we were interested in starting some work on inequality of wealth. Most of the work on inequality deals with income or consumption. Wealth is a slightly uh, different topic. And indeed, it wasn't really regarded at that time as being uh, something that was viable. But we looked at the, the, what was available and we came to the conclusion that there was enough countries, enough background information that it was worth a stab. So we started to collect together information on balance sheets in different countries and what was available in terms of wealth distribution. And then we took the view that we could fill in the gaps for other countries in, in both of those areas and go for a construct a global wealth distribution. The basic idea is to um, begin with the solid evidence, the evidence we have on balance sheets, then add in countries that we have survey data for. Unfortunately, we have survey data. Uh, this was back, uh, we started looking at the year 2000. We had survey data available for China and for India and for Indonesia, which uh, very much helped us fill in the developing world. We then used standard regression techniques to try to estimate wealth levels for the countries that we didn't have information for. And then there's a few countries at the end which tend to be quite small countries, very often little islands in various places, um, or countries which are not really connected with the global economy, people, uh, places like, at the time, Myanmar, North Korea. So for those, we just added an imputation value just based on a sort of what their regional income level average was. So that gave us uh, some information on the level of wealth in all countries of the world. On the distributional side, we, had, we only had... Um, data on about 20 countries where we had wealth data, wealth distribution data. But we do have income distribution data for a much wider variety of countries, um, largely because of the WID data set here. So the WID data set gives us 180 countries. So we then looked at the wealth distribution data, compared it with the income distribution data for the 20 countries where we had both sets and um, you can see very clearly that there's a relationship between income distribution and wealth distribution. Wealth is always more unequally distributed than income. So we used that sort of relationship to try to predict for the other countries where we had income data but not wealth data what the wealth distribution was. It's a crude idea, but on the whole it gives you some uh, a sort of ballpark figure for the, for the wealth distribution. So then we put these two, two things together. We also, the other crucial thing, we have a little utility here which we developed at, at WIDA which generates a synthetic sample from a distribution. So if we know something about the distribution, uh, the Diesel shares or the Lorenz curve, some Lorenz curve points, we can generate a sample of observations which are consistent with, with, that, uh, with that information. So we use this to generate a sample for each country. Of course, it's proportional to the uh, population size. And that gives us, uh, we, we're now generating a sample for the whole world. Um, and then we can process this and look at the inequality, the, the whole issue about what the levels are of wealth in, in different countries and what the distribution is both within countries and across countries. So we've been doing that. Uh, that is what we started at WIDA, and we, had, uh, we uh, came up with the study. This was the first ever attempt to look at the global wealth distribution. Uh, we, we came up with some quite startling figures. One of our uh, core results was that the top 2% of uh, wealth holders in the world owned half of, of global wealth. So we had a headline, which was the top 2% own half global wealth, and when we did a press release, this was our uh, caption at the beginning, and uh, it took off and it just immediately drew people's attention. We had an enormous press reaction to this. It hit, uh, I think it was 500 newspapers around the world. It was, uh, at one point, it was the top story on the BBC uh, website, I believe. Uh, and we had 
I believe that month, uh, 140,000 downloads of our paper from the wider website. Uh, the website actually crashed twice in one day because there were just so many people trying to download, download the, uh, the data. I think that is indicative, really, of just how much interest there is in this topic and also how little information there is. So we were really filling in a gap there that I think was really very important. After that, since uh, we had that study and it was published uh, as part of the project, um, we've been developing it further in connection with uh, Credit Suisse Research Institute uh, putting out an annual wealth report. So we've taken the basic methodology and developed this uh, year by year in various ways. Sometimes it's just a little bit of improvements. It's now, fortunately, there's more countries that have uh, balance sheet data, so that's been a, a big plus. There's more countries with wealth distribution data, so we've filled in quite a lot of the, of the gaps, and it's allowed us to perhaps uh, make the other estimates with more confidence. Um, the other thing that we've done since we've left here in particular is to pay more attention to the top tail of the wealth distribution. The problem with wealth distribution data is it often comes from surveys and there are some very serious problems trying to get accurate information on wealth uh, distribution data in the top tail. It's really a challenge and if it's not done with a lot of uh, uh, care and attention then it can often just not really be very credible. Um, the US does very well, I have to say, in this. They pay a lot of attention. It's to, the, the, the real problems are, first of all, the question about sampling, that very often the top wealth holders are not the ones who agree to take part in the survey. So you have a response bias, uh, which is going to reduce the number of top wealth holders. The second problem is people underreport their wealth. So you have these two combined problems. Um, it's not really surprising, but uh, you have to then say, how do we adjust for this? We've since uh, developed various techniques for uh, using uh, information on the top, uh, the, the rich lists data, which uh, is available now for a lot of countries where you get lists of people and, and estimates of what their wealth is. So we graph this on to the distribution and try to uh, re-estimate the top tail based on this uh, other evidence. Uh, it's mainly now we're using the Forbes billionaire data. One reason for that is because it's, it's done consistently across countries in the world. And there's, in many countries now, enough billionaires to make that uh, a credible exercise. So that's where we are heading, uh, where we are up to now. We, we developed this year on year. In fact, we've now this year pushed it uh, one stage further, and we've got some really interesting results on uh, inequality, wealth inequality, back to the year 2000. So we got 14, 15 years of data on wealth inequality, which is, will be out in this year's, the 2014 uh, wealth report. Mm -hmm.